Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show, episode 30, oh my god! Uh, For those of you that don't know me, I'm Crystal Crawford, and I'm an Access Consciousness Certified Facilitator, and that phrase gets more and more exciting for me to say every single time I say it. I am, the more I facilitate, the more I do classes, hi guys, Uh, the more excited I am to be, to have chosen what I've chosen being an access consciousness facilitator. So I just got into this uh, really cool conversation over Facebook. Somebody just found me through a friend and, you know, she's been really into the law of attraction and the secret and all this stuff. Hi! And, um... She's just recently found the access tools and she's like so excited. Hi, Eleanor. Hi, Kathy. And I was, it was so cool for me to chat with her because she was just asking me a little bit about my journey and how long I've been doing this. And, you know, I was like, wow, it's been four and a half years now, which is fucking crazy. And she's like, and you know, hi, Dominique. She's like, and you do this full time? And I was like, yeah, I certified facilitate full time. It's a miracle. It's like been two and a half years. So thank you guys for being a part of that. Happy New Year. Um, I love that my radio shows fell on Christmas and New Year's, that just makes me happy. But today what I want to talk about is um, the 10 very secret tools to create total freedom. Awesome money replay, thank you, you're so welcome. I did a How to Become Money workbook class that is free if you want it to be. Uh, You can check out my website at crystaljoycrawford.com and uh, you can get your copy of it there. Um, Okay, so... (sighs) Where do I want to start with this? First of all, I am going to be um, really, really pulling a lot of stuff from this book. And I'm going to do a 30-day thing on this if you want to come join me. Um, But this is one of those books, guys, that all of us certified facilitators around the world tend to do a lot of videos on, you know, especially certain parts of it. And also one of those books that I find not a lot of us go through in great detail. And one of the things I've been doing with my 30-day programs or 10-week programs or whatever is I've been really taking like one book and diving into it, like actually reading it, actually using the tools. I'm having epiphanies alongside of you. I'm facilitating what comes up for us. And those, like I just did a 30 Days of Living Beyond Distraction, and those series are life-changing. And why is that? Not because I'm great. I'm all right. It's because the, the, the stuff that's in these books actually changes your whole life. Now, living beyond distraction goes into all the distractor implants. So if you don't know what that is and you want a taste of that, again, go to my website. I'm plugging myself a lot today here. Um, but this one, okay, so many, 500 things like normal. So, so in the last 48 hours, um, you know, I've been changing a lot. Like I run clearing loops at night. I don't know if you guys do that, but I do. And one of the things I've been asking for is to be totally exposed, totally vulnerable, to have all of my agendas exposed. I've been really asking for a lot of awareness. Now, (laughs) the thing about when you ask for something is that you get it. So when you have way more awareness than you had before, um, you can feel more fucked up than you've ever felt before. And For most of our lives, we've had a lot of awareness and not known that we've had a lot of awareness. So we've been, you know, like I talk about, making all of that ours. Um, So you tend to, when you don't know that you're aware, when when you don't have that information, number one, number two, when you don't know what to do with that information. I actually had somebody ask on a call the other day, like, well, what's the point of being so aware? Like, what's the point? And I was like, hi, Claire. Um... Hey, and if you guys have questions, uh, throw them in the chat. We'll, we'll chat about them. But so, the, so when you don't know that you're aware, you don't have that information, and then you don't know what to do with it, and you don't know what the point is, hi, Marianella, then your awareness can feel like a burden. Your awareness can be like one of those things that you want to cut off, and you're like, God, I just wish I wasn't so aware. I can't tell you how many times that I've said that. Um, but the thing is, you are, and it's not something you can cut off. It'd be like, I wish I didn't have a right hand you have one. Now, with a hand, you could, cut, you could cut it off, actually, and then you would be have a stub. And then you could say, I wish I didn't have the stub. And then you could cut that off, and then you'd have a shorter stub. That's awful. That's awful. I've been watching a lot of um, uh, killer, like, uh, historical dramas on Netflix lately, so there's a lot of stubs in those, right? Okay, so, but with your awareness, you can't cut it off. You have it. So the thing about that is, when you have awareness and you, you have to acknowledge that you have it and you have to acknowledge how much of it you have. And number three, you really, 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 if you don't want to go insane and actually you want to have a happy life, have to start acknowledging that what you're aware of isn't yours. Now, 
That's where these 10 best kept secrets to have total freedom come in. Now, I don't know if I'm actually going to get to the 10 things in this 30 minute video. I may talk around them the whole time, but don't worry, there's more coming. But what I want to like, okay, so where was I going? Uh, 10 key. Oh, uh, oh, okay. So recently I had this awareness that, um, I really didn't, hi Kate. I actually didn't want total freedom. I didn't want the total freedom. I actually wanted to be right all the time. That was really more my agenda, to be right all the time. Now tell me, let me tell you what that does to your life. It makes it very hard. You feel like you're justified. You feel like you're right. You feel, you have the satisfaction of knowing that you're the rightest of the right. But your life is really, really hard. And the thing is, the reason is because you, your point of view is only your point of view. It's nobody else's point of view. Nobody else has your point of view. Nobody else has your way of living life. Nobody else has an interest in creating their life in the way that you do. I know that's weird because you are the best life creator on the planet. I get it. I get it. Um, but everybody else has their way of doing life and their way of being in the world that isn't yours. So when you're, when you have no interest in freedom and what's freedom? What is that? Freedom is actually the freedom of having total choice and no point of view. Now, I can tell you that I'm four and a half into uh, four and a half years into a very intensely choosing access consciousness tools journey. Okay, four and, a, and I go to a lot of classes. I do a lot of telecalls. I do all the things, and I cannot tell you enough how, in the last forty eight hours, how relevant interesting point of view I have this point of view is. Okay, interesting point of view I have this point of view. Now, I've, I'm, John and I are going through a big growth spurt and my business is going through a big growth spurt and there's a lot of things that are in flux right now, as they do. When you're asking for major change, you get it. So everything is like in upheaval again. And I woke up the other morning and I was like, it was in my head, running, running, running in my head. Now, one of the things that you learn when you go through living beyond distraction is that when you cannot stop ruminating on something, going over it and over it and trying to figure it out. And it's like, you know that thing, that hamster wheel, that mind chatter? You are in a distractor implant. That's one of the first clues that you are in a distractor implant. You're not in something that's real at all. You're in something that's been implanted in you that you are just running, 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 trying to figure it out. So because I'd gone through the 30 days of living beyond distraction and I had it like fresh in my awareness and I had read it out loud to people, it was like, oh, I'm in a distractor implant right now. Now, what is that information good for? Pock and potting the distractor implant. Now, if you don't know pock and pod, go to theclearingstatement.com. You pock and pod the distractor implant. And then what the question you can ask after that is, okay, so what choices do I have available here that I haven't considered? Now, why is that a good, like, for what reason... Would an infinite being choose to know they were in a distractor implant and then ask another question? Because it makes your life easier. I recently um, watched a video by my friend Julia Sotis, who you have to, if you don't know her, go check her out. She's amazing. And the, the video that she did was about how we don't typically ask for or desire a life that works. A life that works. Now that's a really, really simple phrase, a life that works, right? And this goes back to like, you don't want to be right. You want uh, you don't want to be free. You want to be right. Gary Douglas says that all the time in classes. You don't have an interest in being free. You want to be right. And I've been like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to be free. You know, it's one of those things where like he'll ask you to destroy and uncreate it, and you just go, yes. Will you destroy and uncreate it? Yes. Will you destroy and uncreate it? Yes. I will destroy and uncreate everything until they get into a situation. And total freedom means being willing to be wrong. What? Total freedom is being willing to be wrong. Total freedom is being willing to be vilified. Total freedom is being willing to be adored. Total freedom is being willing to be everything that I am. Total freedom is being willing to be fully exposed. Total freedom is being willing to be vulnerable. Total freedom is being willing to be as capable as I am. Total freedom is being willing to be as brilliant as I am, right? That's actually all of those being willing to be's are what create a life that works. The trick is how do you get if there was a there, it would be total freedom from point of view, total freedom to choose. That would be the there, which of course is never a there because there's always more. There's always what else is possible. There's always how does it get better than that, right? So how do you get from the place where you are like inundated with problems to the place where you have 
the willingness to be whatever, to be wrong, to be okay, to be no point of view, to be willing to choose, to be willing to kill, to be willing to, to destroy, to be willing to create. How do you get from there to here? And I can tell you that all the secrets lie in this here little book. Now, let me give you a quickie run through. Okay? I can't possibly in 30 minutes go into all of these, um, which is why I'm doing 10 weeks and why I invite you to do, take yourself on a 10 week journey or whatever, like take five days a week and actually go through each of these chapters and read them and apply them to your life. So the first best kept secret <laughs> in access consciousness is would an infinite being truly choose this? Would an infinite being truly choose to be limited about money? No. Okay. If I'm choosing to be limited about money, for what reason would I choose that? Now, what, what do these questions do? Because in the beginning, when I was first using these questions, I was like, would an infinite being choose to be limited about money? No. Okay, but I'm sitting here and I'm limited. I still, I didn't get it. I didn't get like what that question was supposed to bring up for me. I didn't get what I was supposed to do with that question. So would an infinite being truly choose to be limited about money? No. Okay. So the question becomes, so what other choices do I have that I've never considered? Now, here's the trick. Here's the thing about asking another question. It empowers you. That's both the freedom and the rub. Because when you are empowered, you can do anything. You can choose anything. If limitation is a choice, here's the freedom and the rub. That means you can choose something else. Now, here's the, here's the thing. You may not be very practiced in choosing beyond limitation. I was really practiced in being limited, like really. And still, I, I still, as I'm creating my life even bigger, whatever bigger means to you, uh, I, I still run into those places where I am actively choosing to be limited. And more and more and more and more and more as I apply these, the more I'm like, I really, I'm, I'm just noticing it. And here's, that's the thing. That's the thing about all these tools is the gift of asking, would an infinite being truly choose to be limited? Hi, Alexander. Hi, Krista. Is I get the awareness that no, an infinite being wouldn't choose to be limited here. And yet I'm choosing it. So for what reason would I choose that? Now you can go down the for what reason would I choose that into why would I choose that and try to figure out the why so you can change it. But you don't have to do that. You can skip that step. It's a shitty step. It takes you down into a toilet bowl. Don't do that step. Hi, Chris. Kirsten. Hi. Happy New Year. Um, don't do the toilet bowl step, dude. Like, I mean, I know we're so good at that. Like, especially us ladies. Like, we'll go out and drink wine with our friends and be like, why is this a problem? Can you help me figure this out? Like, you know, you'll talk, you'll ruminate, you'll like, you'll have appetizers, wine and problems. And I get it because you want to not do that anymore. It's like, how do we fix this life? Right. But if you skip the fixing and you go, okay, so truth, would an infinite being choose to be limited about money? No. Okay. So for what reason would I choose that? What other choices do I have that I have never considered? Now that question is going to bring up awareness. Now you're going to probably want to go to answers. Not, not all of you. I'm just saying. You tend to want to go to answers, but if you don't do that, if you just go, okay, so just sit with that question. So if an infinite being wouldn't choose to be limited about money, what other choices do I have? Just be with that. Be with it for 48 hours. Try being with it for, keep asking, what other choices do I have that I haven't considered? That question is going to empower you with more awareness. And it's also going to tell the universe that you want to know something besides how fucked up you are. Happy New Year, Charlene. Okay, that's that. Touching on that. Second key. Everything is just an interesting point of view. It's just an interesting point of view that I have that December is a slow month. It's just an interesting point of view that I have that, I mean, yes, like in the last 48 hours, hi guys, hi, happy new year. I have had to use interesting point of view. I have this point of view for every single thought in my head. Now I have periods of time, like after a seven day class where I am so much space, I have no thoughts in my head, which is so great. <laughs> Thanks, Wendy. Um, but it's not always like that. You know, and when your awareness increases, you seem to have more thoughts in your head. It's really weird. Why is that? Your awareness has increased. You're psychic. You're a radio receiving tower. So what do you have to do when you have more thoughts in your head? Well, you can either go into feeling fucked up and limited, which I've done. Or you can go, oh, interesting point of view. I have that point of view for every single thought. Interesting point of view. I have that point of view. Interesting point of view. I have that point of view. Now, what does that do? It's not just words that you say. Hi, Svetlana. It's an acknowledgement that you're choosing 
to align and agree with or resist and react to a point of view. Now, truth, would an infinite being have a point of view? No. Are you an infinite being? If you don't know if you're an infinite being, go out right now and try to find the outside edges of you, not, not your body, the outside edges of you. Like literally, go try to find the outside edges of you. You don't have any edges. You go on and on and on and on. You have been, you will be, you will be again. Hi, good morning, John. Hi, Heather Johnson. That's amazing. Hi, Kareen. <laughs> so, if you as an infinite being has increased awareness and you're having all these thoughts and feelings and emotions and your awareness has increased, you have two choices. Only two. You can feel fucked up. Or you can go, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Until you don't feel fucked up anymore. Now what does that do? It just gets you out of feeling fucked up and it gets you out of buying everything that's going through your head. Okay, that's key number two. Third key is live in 10 second increments. Fuck me, is this ever vital? Now as your awareness increases, as you're running clearing loops, as you're having your bars run, as you're choosing classes and your awareness increases... You, the requirement to live in 10 second increments grows. It doesn't get any less. This key doesn't get any less relevant the more access consciousness you do. Okay, just so you know, it gets more relevant. Why? Because your awareness increases and you start making different demands on yourself. So, you know, we're in a new year. You've got new things or additional things that you're asking for, demands that you're making of yourself. This tool becomes even more relevant. Why? Because like we went through the money workbook yesterday, when you make a demand of yourself, it's like putting a golf ball on a tee. Putting a golf ball on a tee. Mm -mm. I only have one. I'm going to talk to my hand. So your demand is like this golf ball on this tee. Well, every time you go to doubt, every time you go to um, fear, every time you go into I don't know if I can do it, every time you chip away at what you're demanding of yourself. So what do you have to do? Demand of yourself and then go, you go into doubt, interesting point of view, I have this point of view, pock and pot all the distractor implants. What else can I choose? You go into fear, pock and pot all the distractor implants. What else can I choose? You go into um, any sort of weirdness around relationships. Well, if I demand this of myself, it's going to mean that my husband leaves me and my kids hate me and my friends are all going to leave me. Pock and pot all the distractor implants, interesting point of view, I have that point of view. What else can I choose? That's where all these tools come into, because this is what you're asking for. This is where you want your life to go. This is the thing that's you're like, that, I'm having that life. That's all I know right now, but that, I'm having that. Okay, so this is where choice in every 10 seconds comes in. Because in every 10 seconds, you, as you're choosing more, as you're creating more, you're going to have all this stuff that you get aware of. Why? I don't know why. Just is. So you've got to be willing to be the empowered one choosing beyond what's happening in your head. This is a very different way of living, people. This is not a way of living that people talk to you about. They will validate your problems, validate that you've got a hard time, validate that you're going through things. And I'm not saying you won't go through things because you, you, you will. As your life's getting greater, as you're making bigger demands of yourself, stuff comes up. But that's why you have to like latch onto these tools, right? Grab onto them. And choose in every 10 seconds and get really aggressive with yourself. Fourth key, live as the question. Don't just ask questions. Live as the question. Live, what would it take to live as what else is possible? How do you do that? You know, what question are you living as now? Are you living as a question now? Or are you living as a walking, talking conclusion? How do you know? Well, this is this, and this is this, and I can't do this, and what would it, like, this is that, and those are all conclusions, right? And those are, like, really obvious examples of conclusion. Living as the question is being a walking, talking, how does it get better than this? What else is possible that I haven't considered? What choices do I have available to me? What the hell am I capable of that I haven't yet chosen? What would it be like to live as the question of what the hell am I capable of that I haven't yet chosen? And listen, a lot of you are choosing beyond what you've ever chosen before. So what the hell am I capable of that I haven't yet chosen is almost like, Jesus, that like I got here. Like, what else do you want from me, right? No, what the hell are you capable of now that you haven't yet chosen? And in this 10 seconds, what the hell are you capable of now that you haven't yet chosen? What would it be like to live as a question? Like, how much time do you spend trying to figure out why you're fucked up? When you could actually be putting that energy into choosing to live as, what the hell am I capable of that I haven't yet chosen? You see? Your energy can always go one of two directions. It can go into figuring out why you're fucked up. I know I keep saying that. Or it can go into choosing. 
Fifth key, no form, no structure, no significance. Holy fuck balls. No form, no structure, no significance. How many of you guys, I do a lot of significance and form and structure. It's the way I was raised. It, my mom is a walking, talking form, structure and significance. So what would it be like to actually apply that to your relationships? What if your relationships had no form, no structure, no significance? I mean, John and I play on that playing field all the time. We are currently broken up. <laughs> we do that a lot. We're like, okay, I'm done. I'm done with the way we've been doing this. Go sleep downstairs, <laughs> he offered. But it's like, but that's the thing. Is like we actually have to take our relationship and we have to like recreate it all the time because it stops working in the way that it does. And how many of you guys try to keep your relationships working when it's actually not working? And if you would just say it's not working and we got to create something else, you could create something else. If you would just acknowledge what it is and stop trying to hold in place the form and the structure and the significance of your relationship, it would actually give your relationship a totally different possibility all the time. So what would that be like? And that's just one facet of life. Talk about your business. Talk about your, um, your work relationships. Talk about your friendships, your family relationships. What would it be like to have no form, no structure, no significance with your family relationship? Holy fuck. Right? You, get, you start to see like, how you have all of these different choices that you've never considered. Sixth key, no judgment, no discrimination, no discernment, no judgment. How much of your day do you spend judging you? Truthfully, how much of your day, how many moments of your day are spent judging you? More than 82,000 moments? Less than, more than a million moments? Like, how much? If you, what would it be like to truly adopt a no judgment reality? How many times in a day would you have to catch yourself judging you? And change it. How many times in a day would you, how present would you have to be with you and your reality and what's going on in your head to not judge you? A lot, a little bit, or a megaton? What would your life be like if you actually chose that level of presence with you? Seventh key, no competition. What does this mean? There is no competition for you. If you were functioning from no competition, would there be anybody else who could touch the gift that you are, who could... You know, would it matter who was creating what in the world? Would, it, would that even be relevant? If there was no competition for you, would you create way more? If you were the only one of your kind and you actually knew that in the core of your being, if you knew that with all that you are, what would your life be like? If there was no competition in your relationship, if there was no competition between you and your family, if there was no competition between you and your work colleagues, if there was no comp... What would that reality be like? How present would you have to be with yourself? How much more would you have to choose? Would you be wanting to choose if there was truly no competition between you and the rest of the world? No drugs of any kind. <clears throat> no drugs of any kind, meaning how many things do you use to take you out of being you? How many things do you, do you use? Food? Do you use uh, Netflix? I love ne I love Netflix. What? What? Do you, use, uh, do you use alcohol? Do you use marijuana? Do you use drugs? Of, do you use, uh, what are you? What are your drugs of choice? What if you didn't choose that? What would you have to be present with? How much awareness do you actually have that you've never been willing to acknowledge? That if you were willing to acknowledge it, would give you you, give you choices. Do not listen to, tell, or buy the story. Holy fuck. Guys, don't listen to your own stories. Don't buy them and certainly don't tell them. Now listen, I have stories. Okay, I like telling stories. I like telling stories to illustrate points. I like telling stories about my own life. But that's a totally different thing than telling myself a story about why I can't do something. And how many times do you do that in a day? How many times do you tell yourself you're, you got all the reasons and the justifications lined up just in case anybody asks you, including you, right? Like, it, how do you know you're in a story? You go into because and but, right? Because and but. Those are, those, that's how you know you're in a story. I would because, I, I want to because anytime you have to justify something you're choosing, you're in a story. Any time you have to justify why you're not choosing a class or what it is you don't want to do with your life or what it is you want to create because but, I, you're in a story. How many stories do you go into in a day? Holy fuck. So what kind of presence would you have to have with yourself to not go into story, right? Like, holy, okay, mm -hmm. 
And the tenth key is no exclusion. And I love this key because as, as the people that we are, we tend to go into, yeah, I don't want anybody to feel excluded. But guess who we exclude more than anybody else? Ourselves. Guess who you exclude more than anybody else? Your reality. You. What you would actually desire in your relationships, in your business, in your work relationships, in your life. What do you want your life to be like? Guess who gets excluded? You. What would your life be like if you never again chose to exclude your reality? If in a conversation with your spouse your reality was fully present, what would the conversation be like? How would it change? In the conversations that John and I have in our relationship, my reality is never excluded anymore. My reality is like, this works for me and this doesn't work for me. And I get that that may not work for you and that's okay. But we just need to have a creative conversation about something else we can create because no longer am I willing to exclude me. I'm no longer willing to survive situations. I'm no longer willing to just have things that just, you know, that I just take My life has to work for me. And that's the thing about creating a life that works, is it includes your reality. What would it be like if you included your reality in your life? Are you now? Or are you just tolerating most of what you're choosing? Or some of what you're choosing? How much are you tolerating? What would you change? And if you could change it right away, what choices do you have available to you that you've never considered? And I think that's the thing that I love the most about going through these 10 keys and actually studying them and applying them to your life is that it invites you to a different level of presence with you. And you know what happens then? You become the gift that you actually are. You already are a gift. Even if you don't see it, even if you can't acknowledge it, even if those words of mine are just rolling off your back, even if what happens in your head is like, yeah, but you don't know me. Trust me, I did that forever. You are a gift. Now, being it, choosing to be it, is a different kind of invitation to yourself. Being it, sure, you are it. Are you choosing to be it? Are you choosing to be it for you? Are you choosing to be it in your relationship? Are you choosing, right? What does that be like? It's when you're not excluded, you're not competing, you have no point of view, you live as the question, you are not judging you. You're not functioning from form and structure and significance. You're functioning from creating what works. And all of those are beautiful words. Until you get into your real life. And then that's where choosing in every 10 seconds and the practice of being an infinite being with total choice comes in. And that's the gift of these tools. That's the gift of these 10 keys. And that's the gift of you being willing to choose it. Because listen, guys, this is not... Look, all of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory and... It's not always easy. And so it's the, it's, this is, and I think this is the thing about access consciousness tools that I love the most. Um, They are a gift and an invitation to being that we don't even know we want. And the more I ask for, and the more that I choose, and the more that I'm willing to receive financially with my life and my relationships, the more it invites me to this intense, aggressive presence with me. And it's not always comfortable, right? And you can choose consciousness light, and it's not even that that's wrong. And I mean, what do I mean by that? It's like, you can get these tools to work and just make more money and, you know, live in a better house and all that stuff. What are you asking for, though? And, and, you know, one of the things I love about Gary, he's like, here, I read it right in the beginning. He's like, the 10 keys were called the 10 commandments. It was intended as a joke. It was not a serious thing, but people got up in arms about it, so we changed the name to the Ten Demandments and all kinds of other things, but none of those names really worked. Now they're the Ten Keys to Total Freedom, which is a pretty good name for them. We still like the joke and the name the Ten Commandments because they are commandments. They're commandments or demands you have to make of yourself if you really want to create total awareness and freedom. All we care about is total awareness. None of the rest of it matters. And I've been really looking at my priorities, you know, heading into 2018 and also since the seven day, just in general. And I'm like, do I have the priority of total awareness? Or is my priority money, you know, and all these things. And it's, it's not that money is wrong or, you know, big business is wrong. It, those can be included. And I was just looking at like, do I care about awareness or do I want to be right? 
do you want to be right or do you want to be free? And the more I've been looking at that and the more I've been acknowledging what my agendas are, the more I'm like, I want to be right. <laughs> I had to just acknowledge I don't ask. I haven't been asking for total freedom. I've been asking for partial freedom so that I can get over there so that I can have a little more money. Right? So cool. Like when you can acknowledge where you're functioning from, you just acknowledge it. Like, all right, cool. Well, I just want a few more bucks in my pocket. Maybe tens of thousands of bucks in my pocket. That's all I really care about, right? And I'll create some consciousness along the way. But that was... And then I was like, is that really true? Or have I just been functioning from it? Is it really true that that's all I desire? Or is that just what I've been functioning from? So more and more and more, I'm like, oh, that's what I've been functioning from. And what... The... So... Here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the gift of awareness. Oh, that's what I've been functioning from. Awareness, no point of view. What other choices are available to me that I haven't yet chosen? What if my target was total awareness? Not target. Like, what if that was a demand I made of myself? What if it was a demand to just never go to conclusion again? I haven't yet demanded that. I've demanded more dollars. I've demanded a bigger business. I have not demanded that I never go to conclusion again. What would my life be like if I demanded that? That is almost an inconceivable choice. And it requires this presence with you. It requires all of you, not just some of you, not just a piece of you, all of you. And it can be so fun if you let it be. And it can be the greatest adventure of living that you've ever chosen. Because you get you, you get you, you get access to all of you, all of your capacities, all of your awareness, all of your magic, all of you. So my invitation to you is look at what are your current agendas, what are your current priorities, and what other choices do you have available to you that you've never considered? And if you have not yet picked this book up, chosen to go through it, and studied it, I'm inviting you, whether it's with me or on your own, study it, apply it, go, what would that be like? What would it be like to be so present with me that I never did not have my reality again. <sighs> Thank you for being live with me. I am so excited about this. I'm so excited about what we're capable of choosing. I'm so excited about these tools. So if this contributed to you, share it so other people can find it. Because what would it be like if the whole world knew that there was a different possibility for life? That there was a different possibility for having the awareness that they have for being the weirdos that they are. Thank you. Thank you for you. Thank you for the gift that you are. I'll see you next week.